welcome back. Now, in this video, I'm going to be gluing the X braces onto the top of the guitar, and then I'm going to be fitting the big bridge plate, and in fact, making the bridge plate. Now, I've already glued the X braces together. I did that quite a while ago in a previous video. And I'm aware that a lot of people just glue the braces individually onto the guitar. They notch them and then they, they glue them straight on uh, without first joining them together as a separate operation. But I chose to glue them together first and I just want to use a little bit of micro Lego. Probably can't use the word Lego, quite how they get away with the uh, patents, I don't know, but uh, nano blocks. Um, just going to use a couple of nano blocks to just explain why I've done that. Here are two examples of badly fitting braces. The joints have not been executed well. Um, in this one, I've got a very loose joint, it just doesn't fit together at all. And on this one, it, it's just a little bit too tight. I ignore the horizontal dimension, I've just kept, kept the horizontal um, dimension a little bit wider so you can see what's going on. Um, just think about the vertical dimension here. In, in these, we, we slot the X braces together and this brace isn't actually touching the surface of the guitar. The notch isn't deep enough. In this one, the notch is too deep. Both braces are making good contact with the guitar, but there's no connection in the joint itself. And I just use this to illustrate that you've got to get the joint exactly right, otherwise you won't get even gluing pressure across all parts of the joint. You won't get even, even gluing pressure across this brace, this brace, and the middle of the joint. But if we were to join the two of them together first, if there's a slight mismatch, oops, <laughs> if, if there's a slight mismatch, there we go, we've, we've, we've glued them together, but we've got a slight mismatch underneath. And of course, in reality, it's probably only gonna be a fraction of a millimeter. But we're then gonna put that onto the sanding dish, and that underside then becomes perfectly smooth and even. Uh, in the sanding dish we're able to keep the braces upright. There's no uh, rolling of the braces so the undersides are square, they're not rounded. And what we end up with is an underside that's uh, perfectly uh, spherical and smooth and we get perfect gluing pressure onto the top on all parts of the joint. Braces and, crucially, in the joint itself in the middle. So that's why I've glued them first and not glued them individually and ended up with bad contact on either the brace and the guitar or bad contact in the middle of the joint, like that one. I hope that makes sense. A little precaution before I go on. The, uh, I don't want to be thinning this face anymore, probably. I <laughs> uh, wouldn't rule it out, but um, at the moment I'm happy with the thickness of this. And uh, I don't want any blemishes on the surface which have to be sanded away. I'm completely sealing around the edge, so there's no chance of any particles getting in and rubbing on the face. It's all very well protecting it with a piece of paper, but you don't want any particles behind it, which would just make the whole thing even worse than before. I'm just checking I've got everything marked, particularly the position of the bridge plate. I've, I've already marked everything else, but just the bridge plate isn't clear from this. I've now got a line. Because I won't be able to apply the template once the uh, X braces off have been applied. A bit reluctant to draw pencil lines on this because I don't want any pe pencil lines visible, even though this is the underside and nobody's ever going to see this. One final check is just to mark the position of the head block because I don't want the upper brace to go any closer. So uh, 
that pretty much determines the position of the top. Oh, perhaps I should have put some paper on this to... Oh, no. That's better. There's not much to take off, really, because this is a much shallower radius dish. This is a 28-foot radius. I can use the hole in the middle to my advantage here. It's, uh, it's remarkably steady. I suspect this needs sharpening, but we'll give it a go. Yeah, I think it'll do just for the basic basic shaping. That's probably it. Rinse and repeat. That's given me a pretty good starting point. So, as with the back, we'll just apply some pencil so we can see what's being taken away. And very gently. One of the great things about pre-gluing the, the, the X braces is that everything's kept nicely upright. I haven't worried, got to worry about the... As long as I don't press too hard, nothing's going to twist. One perfectly radiused X brace. Solid. Some pre clamping activities. Just got to make sure we've got the X brace in exactly the right position. <laughs> and also that we've got it orientated the right way. I don't think I can get that wrong. Let's just clamp that and then we'll mark it with masking tape. Two layers should help it locate a bit better. Too much glue already. <laughs> I just smeared glue on the soundboard. Awkward. That's had about 20 minutes, so let's remove the masking tape. 
and see see what the glue seems like. A stiffer straw. It's the same straw I was using for the back braces. This has now had three and a half hours, it's snowing outside and I'm having trouble keeping the conservatory warm so I'm going to bring this in overnight. I've got to make a decision about the bridge plate. Now I've got two very different pieces of maple here. Um, different colours, but this might be the age. I think this was milled a long time ago. Um, this was uh, milled only, a, um, I guess, a year ago now. Wow. <laughs> um, time flies. <laughs> um, this was done by me. This is uh, just a piece I bought from a, a supplier. But this is quarter sawn. The grain lines, the, the rings are going that way. And this is skew cut. And grains going like this. And there's an argument that this is actually stronger. Um, although a lot of books suggest using quarter saw and I guess it's more stable. But we'll see. At the moment this feels a lot stiffer than this but that's to be expected because this is four millimeters thick and that's three millimeters thick and stiffness is a cube rule on uh, thickness so you'd expect this to be more than double the stiffness of this based on thickness alone. So I'm going to get these thickness to two and a half millimeters and then we'll make a decision about which one to use. On this one I don't have too much of a choice on the grain direction whereas on this I've got almost a free choice on grain direction and grain direction is important because I want to skew the, the direction of the grain. I don't want to have it perpendicular to the center line. I want it more like this. And the reason for that is I, I don't want the bridge pin holes to all line up along the same set of fibres. Uh, by skewing it, each bridge pin has its own, hopefully, its own set of fibres and that makes it much, much stronger. It's much less likely to split along a line um, following the uh, the bridge pins or, or the, the ball ends, in fact. is uh, The ball ends are probably what's going to cause it to split. So we'll get it thicknessed and then we'll get a, make a decision on which piece to use. took a lot longer than I was anticipating. That's I probably took each piece through a hundred times. Um, they are very hard, both of them, and I suspect the sandpaper on my drum sander needs changing. But they're now the same thickness and that way they feel about the same stiffness. But this way this feels a lot stiffer and I know it's I know it's shorter but Keep my fingers together, that feels much less stiff than this. Maybe it's because the grain is close together on that, but I suspect that this is sycamore and this is maple, rock maple. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to use this because it's clearly stiffer that way. Although surprisingly they seem to be about the same stiffness that way. Marking knife, right handed.
just creating a little knife wall just to get my razor saw started. I didn't actually cut right to the edge with the marquee knife. There we go. This razor saw is tricky doing it this way. I'm trying to keep a really accurate cut because I want it to butt up to the cross brace really well. Should be nearly through. difficult can it be to saw through 2.5 millimetres of maple? I think I'm through. There we go. This is a pull saw by the way. I'm just going to chamfer the edge. It just helps the, uh, the edges flex a little and makes the bridge plate less visible on the front of the guitar, hopefully. I think this small chamfer, sh chamfer should be enough. wonder how successful this would be but uh, that seems to be working really nicely. I was about to head for my spindle sander. But that looks good. I think it's the first time I've planed a curve. It's actually easier to follow along on the bench, getting a smoother result. Oops. This 
there's just a fraction of a millimetre to come off this. It's about a quarter of a millimetre. And I'm going to just quickly create a handle with which to do it. I want to take off as little as I can get away with, really. Yeah, I've penciled the bottom. Yeah, we've taken stuff off the edges and we've still got the middle. I'm now 2.3 at the edges and I've just started to touch the pencil in the middle. I don't know whether you can even see that but uh, I wanted to take the absolute minimum off and that's what I've achieved, so that's great. So we're, we're still 2.5, 2.47 in the middle. So that's our bridge plate. Lovely. Quick dry fit, the, um, the masking tape is just giving me that extra little bit of confidence, but it, it's pretty much self-locating. Let's glue it. Here's a tip I picked up from the Gore Gillette book. Is to damp the top of the bridge. Actually there's quite a lot of water there. But by damping the top of the bridge, then if it bridge, <laughs> bridge plate, then if it picks up any moisture from the glue, it, it helps to prevent it curling. Because it's going to expand on the glue side. I'm not expecting it to curl because it's not curly maple. I'm going to the go bars so they're pushing that way a little bit. It's just occurred to me if perhaps I should have put some glue along the edge but maybe we'll get a little bit of squeeze out. Well I put very little glue on actually. Well there we go. It's probably enough pressure. Should we add another? <laughs> Let's just keep adding them. No glue squeeze out. I'm going to just very carefully peel this off. And we'll leave that a few hours. Here it is. I love my bridge plate. It's really nice. Um, I didn't leave it overnight uh, for the glue to dry. Uh, the glue probably only got about um, three and a half, four hours for the cross braces, cross braces, X braces, and uh, three, three and a half hours for the bridge plate. But I think that was okay. I, I, I was having trouble keeping the temperature in my little conservatory up overnight. It's been quite cold the last couple of days. We actually had snow which is very unusual for the south coast of England. I've had some comments about humidity and my experience in the past is humidity generally speaking isn't 
a problem here on the south coast of England. It, it's fairly even, but clearly if the temperature drops right down, so does the humidity. So I was very nervous about leaving this overnight when I was having trouble keeping the temperature in, in here up. I didn't want this to get down below. It was, it was creeping down towards 15 degrees when I, I thought, no, I'm going to bring it indoors. I keep my components indoors um, so that it's a fairly even temperature, uh, fairly even humidity. And, and I've, I'm not experiencing any humidity related problems with, with for instance, my other guitars. Um, if you live in somewhere like the middle of uh, North America, things may well be very different for you. Um, the, 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 t the, the humidity swings a lot between summer and winter and drops to almost zero in the winter. But we don't get that on the, on the UK, it's quite a mild climate. So I think I'm all right, but I will be monitoring the humidity in future, particularly as this is going to get finished during the summer and the temperature swings in here are dramatic uh, during the summer. I, I, I'm, I'm going to try and get hold of an air conditioning unit. I hope to have it finished by the summer. Um, I've had some comments recently about how long this is taking. Uh, some of the comments I had to uh, delete because they, they weren't exactly uh, complimentary. Um, yeah, it, it does take a while. Th th this was another six hours work. Now I know some of that is because I'm filming and that, that slows down the process. But you know, making the bridge plate, it, 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 it took me three hours. Um, so this does take time. And of course, I've got another four or five hours of editing to do on this. This isn't my full time job yet. Maybe one day. But uh, yeah, please be patient with me. I will be getting this finished eventually. OK, um, yeah. So <laughs> that's it for this video. Uh, make sure you're subscribed. Go check out my Patreon. Um, comment as you always do. And uh, we'll, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.